While browsing eBay for mystery Chinese modules, I found this one, which is described as two or four wire universal ozone generator negative ion sterilization ozone generator power. And there is no information about this. Even having got it, the only information in the back, it does give the manufacturer's name, but their website didn't have anything. It describes the model as uh, HT-238-C, that just brought up an eBay listing. And 220 volt, 50 hertz, which you'd expect for a Chinese product because their main voltage is 220 volts. And inside uh, is a little circuit board. Let me zoom down on this and show you what's in here. There is, uh, let me grab a pen, a little pen here. There is a, a gas-filled corona discharge tube because I can see the electrode up the middle with the outer mesh. There is a high voltage transformer to power that, a capacitor here to be discharged through that, probably by a thyristor, and then there's a relay, and what looks like a, a couple of diodes down here, a couple of diodes there, capacitor, and then a drop capacitor, maybe to power the relay? I do not know. I don't know what the purpose of this is. The four-wire one, I had the choice of a two-wire one, which would have been simple, power up, it generates ozone, but I chose the four-wire one just because I thought that will add an extra challenge to the puzzle. So this circuit board is potted and I've noticed that it's a sort of, it's not a hard resin like I originally thought it was. It's a sort of gooey polymer silicone type potting stuff. So I'm going to try and get this out and then we can explore the circuit board and we can try and reverse engineer this and see if we can work out what connections do what and make it do stuff. Okay, right. It was fairly easy to get out because it was a sort of polymer gel type stuff, that sort of soft silicony potting compound. And because of that, it doesn't stick too well to the circuit board, so I was able to peel it off and get a nice clean image. But the circuitry is very, very strange. I've kind of worked out what this bit's for. It's a guess, though. It's a, I think it's a safety latching circuit, like a no-volt relay. But this is using this thyristor here in the most bizarre way I've come across. It's using it uh, in a way that uh, is a characteristic that is not an official use characteristic, just to absolutely minimise the component count. So tell you what, here's what we'll do. I'll show you the layout here. It is pretty much, as I said, it's a relay with a capacitive, uh, capacitor to forming with these uh, four diodes. It's for a capacitive dropper with a smoothing capacitor just to power the relay. That's all it's doing, it's powering the relay. And there's a separate section here, which uh, only shares a common set of neutral, but it has just the high voltage transformer for the tube. It's got the capacitor that's discharged through that, a thyristor, two resistors in the trigger circuit and a diode for rectification. And that is it. So tell you what, I'm going to zoom down this. So you can actually take a snapshot of that if you want. If you want to go at reverse engineering this yourself, you can try this and then pause the video and just see if you can work it out. But to be honest, I don't recommend it too much because it's quite complex. However, there's the first image. And here is the back of the circuit board with everything flipped and adjusted accordingly, just to make it easier to actually correlate that to uh, where everything is. Actually, tell you what, let's turn that around because that would be easier because then it would definitely correlate to where everything is. That's the high voltage transformer. This is the relay snapshot. And let's progress with the reverse engineering. So I'll bring in the schematic. The schematic. And even seasoned electronic veterans are going to struggle to get their heads around a bit of this. Let's get rid of the relay for a start. The relay is simply a capacitive dropper uh, there. With in, so a capacitor with a discharge resistor in series with the uh, bridge rectifier. And then the smoothing capacitor and the relay across the other side. And when the relay comes in, it effectively the contact just bypasses onto a connection fed from the same feed. And my guess is that if this, the red here wire is the, the feed, then if you were to put a switch across this to the blue, when you press that, it brings the circuit in, then it bypasses the switch and it holds the circuit in, which means that if the power goes off at any point in time, then it will reset and you'll need to push the button to start it. A bit like a tumble dryer. You know those uh, dryers that when you close the door, you have to push the button to start it to stop kids baking themselves in tumble drawers. Then we go on to this. That has me wondering if this is for a, a UVC tube, that if someone opens the door of a lab, then it turns everything off. 
uh, if it's for sterilization, then when the doors close, someone has to leave the lab and then push the button to start the sterilization process because there is a hint that it may be for a sterilization chamber. The high voltage circuitry is very odd. So the black wire, I'm using sort of UK and Chinese terminology, I'm making black at neutral, that's the old colour code in the UK. The black's neutral and I'm guessing yellow is the live. And the way this circuitry operates is extremely odd because normally you'd expect something like the neutral to be down here, but there's not. it doesn't look like there's continuity of the circuitry and this had me puzzling for a while. So here is how it works. The capacitor charges up via the inductor when live is positive. So that's positive. Neutral is negative at that point in time. So it charges up uh, via this diode until no more charge can go on it. And the current path it finds back is actually via the thyristor. But to actually work that out, there is no official current route through a thyristor for the positive to actually find its way back going by conventional current flow. To understand how that works, you have to imagine what's actually between the cathode here, the cathode or cathode, uh, anode and gate, and the gate. So that's a cathode and the gate. It looks normally like a diode, but it's not just a diode. That's it. This is when you're triggering a thyristor, that's what it looks like. You see roughly 0.6 volts to, from the gate to the cathode. But there's a breakdown voltage as well. So this acts as something like a 5 volt or so zener as well. And what they're relying on to actually operate this is that as that charges up, it's, they're exceeding the breakdown voltage from the cathode to the gate to allow current to flow through this current limiting resistor to the, the neutral, which is very strange. This also means that the gate is pulled down quite hard. It's pulled down effectively negative to the uh, to the cathode, so it keeps that thyristor well and truly off. When the polarity changes on the AC cycle, this goes positive and this goes negative. Uh, it doesn't really matter. No current is effectively flowing to turn this on because there wouldn't be an easy route back for that. But what happens instead is because this is not pulling it down below the cathode voltage anymore, this goes out of circuit and the charge on the capacitor then drives the thyristron via this one mega ohm resistor. That turns the thyristor on. The thyristor, in their nature, they latch on and it shunts. It suddenly turns on and shunts the high current loop uh, in here, which uh, creates a, a pulsed magnetic field as that capacitor discharges instantly through this coil, which is coupled across magnetically onto the secondary, which is a high number of turns, and that's the high voltage that is used to uh, make the, uh, the tube glow. Effectively, current is coupled via the gas to the outer mesh. Let me just explain that. That's a, I've explained it many times before in other videos, but it's worth mentioning. If you have two electrodes and you apply a high voltage across them, then a spark will potentially jump across them. If you put a dielectric barrier in between that stops that, then if there's AC or pulsing uh, current, you end up as streamers of tiny little sparks, which basically creates a corona discharge. And that corona discharge, uh, when oxygen O2, two uh, atoms of oxygen, oxygen molecule go in, it can split them apart and they can recombine temporarily, some of them as O3, which is a molecule of ozone, which is what they're looking for here. They're looking to create the ozone, which is a short-lived unstable gas, which oxidizes everything. It makes a bleachy smell and it kills everything, including viruses. This may be out of a coronavirus generation chamber or something like that. Who knows? But anyway, uh, let's give this a go. So I've sussed out. We'll test the two separate circuits independently. I'm going to cut these wires down because they're just a bit long. It was obviously designed for some specific applications. So let's uh, cut them to go into the, the hoppy. So I'll get rid of these wires. And I shall get a pair of wire strippers. It's going to be a pretty thin wire it usually is. Let's see if this strips it. Yes, it does. It does look copper, but it might be copper-coated aluminium. Who knows? I really don't know what application this is for. 
I think it is a sterilisation chamber or a sterilisation of a room. Initially, I thought it might have been for uh, keeping steam rooms or something sanitary, but I get the feeling this is a sort of lab or medical application instead. I could be wrong. This is just guessing because I really don't know its application. Either way, it does have mains voltage in it. Uh, in the case of the UK, it's got 240. In the case of China, it's 220 volts. Let's zoom back out so you can actually see what's going on here. So I'll twist these wires and then I'll stuff them into the, the hoppy as a convenient connection point. So here's the hoppy. I won't plug it in yet. I shall put the black, which I believe is a common, I'll put it into neutral. And let's uh, get my doodle. Uh, I reckon that blue was the load. Uh, and red was the live. So let's put the red in here. And when I power this up, I'm not expecting anything to happen because it will be isolated by the fact there's a relay contact that is open. So I'm just going to make sure all other wires are just tucked out the way here. I'm going to keep the blue one handy because I'm going to actually emulate bridging these by actually tucking this into a connection. I'm thinking, could I wire this up to something? But I'll plug it in. Nothing has gone bang. This is good. Uh, no current draw, but when I touch this to live, he said, ginger, uh, it should click and it should draw current. It just clicked and it's latched. It's now drawing 0.9 watts, uh, showing a current about 52 milliamps. Tell you what, let's measure the voltage across that relay coil. So I shall unplug this. Yeah, it's going to hold a charge. It's going to hold, I don't think it'll hold a charge. So here is the, the connections, the relay coil. Let's bring the meter in. And we'll see what voltage the simple uh, capacitive dropper is powering that relay with. I'd expect it to be around about 12 volts-ish. Makes a note, where are the wires? Where are my wires? Okay. So nothing initially. I dab this wire in. It latches. This blue wire is now live. It means voltage. I'll keep that in mind. And I shall probe across the relay contacts. 16.7 volts is quite a lot for a 12 volt relay. And climbing. Is it going up to 17 volts? It's gone up to 17 volts. That's a bit too much. That's not good. Then again, this is 240 volt versus the Chinese 220. Okay. Um, ways they could have tamed that down. They could have tamed it down by simply changing the value of this capacitor. It is 680 nanofarad. Uh, they could have made this 470 or 560. They could have tamed it down until it reached the voltage that. So you might say, why are, they, why are they even doing this? Why are they using a capacitive dropper for the relay? Well, the answer is that if they, they could have used a 240 volt, 220, 240 volt relay, but they're probably less reliable. This would be cheaper and be more reliable because the lower voltage relays run cooler, well, when they're being run at the correct voltage, and also, uh, well, it is smaller, cheaper, and more reliable. That's my guess. Uh, okay, next thing to do. This is a scary bit. I reckon if, the, if I keep the black in here, and I tuck the yellow and blue... No, I need the yellow now. If I tuck the red and blue out of the way, because they're part of that safety circuit, then this should make a loud buzzing noise. Ooh, slightly scared. This is good. What's going to happen? Ugh. Is it going to go bang? Oh, tell you what, there's a wire off. That wire is off. I can hear it buzzing, though. So let's uh, disconnect this. One moment, please. I'm just going to reattach that. The wire is reattached. Let's begin again. So let's put the uh, common connection in. Um, and the yellow, which is the drive for the high voltage circuitry. And see if it goes kaboom. It won't, because uh, it worked before. Oh, it's making a loud buzzing noise. Oh, I'm getting the ozone. It's not strong. The power consumption is 1.3 watts. 7 milliamps, 0.7 power factor. That's surprising, given it's only half wave. Um... Is it visible? Is it glowing? Hold on, I'm just going to turn the light off. Let's take the exposure off. Oh, 
that is interesting. It's full of little, uh, it's full of little tiny sparks. I thought the thing was going to glow. Tell you, I'm going to have to get you down and take a closer look at this. One moment, please. I had to switch to a different camera for this, so it might sound different. But, uh, this is the effect as it looks. Lots of tiny little sparks coming from that centre wire through the gas and uh, making contact the surface where then it capacitively couples uh, onto the outer metal mesh and creates the corona discharge on the surface. Very odd. Very neat. So that was very interesting. Quite a novel little unit. The fact it's got that safety interlock and it's the first time I've seen them implement a sort of zero volt relay based on the capacitive dropper and a low voltage relay just to keep costs and size down. And this circuitry is neat, particularly the way they abuse that thyristor in a non-conventional driving way just to keep the components down because that's reduced the component count in that to a capacitor, two resistors, the diode and the thyristor. It's made it very, very minimalist. And this is a, also a very neat tube, so it was well worth getting. I don't know 100% where it's used in real life, but uh, well worth getting just to explore it and reverse engineer it and uh, basically see what it was.